Welcome back to the neighborhood, boys and girls. Our first guest of the night is Chelsea Lupold from City Abstract and also Keller Williams Morristown. You're the Swiss Army Knife now. You've yeah. added some more skills onto your name. Yes, I have. Welcome to the neighborhood. <laughs> Thank so, you. So we do it a little different. As I said earlier, we talk about pre- real estate transaction life. So what was your road to get here? How did you come from little girl, second grade, Chelsea, to <laughs> boom in, in, in the industry? So growing up, pretty normal life. Went to school, high school. Um, once high school ha had ended, um, I was really good friends with the daughters of Patricia Fume. Okay. Green Max of Cherry Hill. I was going to school at night. I wanted to work full time during the day and Pat went into her office and said, this girl's a good candidate. Give her a chance just answering the phones and that's how I got started. Remax at Cherry Hill back in the early 2000s when things were crazy, busy, insane. Yeah. And I started answering the phones there from there. As like a pre-screen kind of thing? Yeah, pre-screen, setting okay. appointments, okay. Um, you know, directing calls to agents. That's what, back when they still had the big book of the MLS mm -hmm. listings and yeah. you would set the appointments that way. Okay. From there, I started to get involved in title. Worked at a few title companies along the way. Got licensed in title. Really enjoyed it. And from there, I was at the um, title company for Lennar Builders. Mm -hmm. Got uh, licensed in PA to do transactions as well. Got a lot of interesting things going on there. Uh, learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And from there, I decided uh, that I would like to take a chance at freelancing. Okay. Just doing closings all together. Um, I left my job, didn't really have anything else in place yet, but I texted everybody that I knew in the industry and said, hey, I'm going to try this. Um, if you need help, let me know. Every single person mm. responded back. That's awesome. And, um, That's how you had, know you're good. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've, had, I've had a lot of work. Um, City Abstract is my main company. I'm there all the sure, time. Sure, sure. Um, We've all worked at other title companies before, mm -hmm. so we all just came together there. So it's been a great experience. Uh, we're like a well-oiled machine, yeah, I will I've, say. I've done quite a few <laughs> yes. transactions there with Val Regan. Shout out to Val. She still <laughs> owes me a trip in here, but uh, she'll be here soon. Um, so you're at the final part of the transaction, you know, the yes. closing, the closing table. Can you think of like one or two really crazy outlandish closings that you had where you're like, oh shit, I can't believe this is going on right now. What was like one of the craziest yeah. so, that I've had? Uh, up in North Jersey, go to attorney's office. Already crazy. <laughs> Already crazy. Go to the up in attorney's North Jersey. office. We sit there with the buyer. Um, you know, he's super excited. We're doing all the documents, we sign everything, get funding approval, and we're just waiting for the seller to come in and sign. The seller comes in and she says to us, I have some bad news. And we're like, well, what's that? Like, is something leaking? Is there an issue? She's like, I'm not selling my house to you guys today. <laughs> and we're all just kind of like, well, you're under contract. And you know, she kind of had a moment there um, threw some stuff and then walked out. Uh, needless to say, two weeks later, it did close. She right. said that she wanted an attorney at the table, but that was, uh, that was pretty interesting. I've that, never had anybody sounds... actually show up at the table and say, bad news. I'm not selling my house to you today. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I had one, um, this was a couple years back where it was, uh, a man had passed away and he had three daughters but he also had a... That's, your, that's the husband, right? Yes. The special... Let uh, me just take that real go ahead, quick. take that real quick. <laughs> with the pimp juice ringtone for the hey, husband. Dear. Calling on the phone. I am in the middle of doing this um, quick little interview, and I will give you a call right back. Okay? Gotta answer the All call right. for love the husband. You. Love you. Bye. <laughs> that's awesome. We have a very good sense of humor. Gotta, both take, of us. <laughs> gotta take the pimp juice call. Um, so I was in this transaction, and the 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 dad passed away, 
And he, his three daughters were the, the heirs. And then he had a young girlfriend who was actually younger than the three daughters. So they didn't like the girlfriend. At the table, they found that they thought the dad owned the house free and clear. At the table, they found out that the dad took a $50,000 line of credit six months before he passed away to get the girlfriend boobs and to go on a trip to Italy. <laughs> so they were arguing on whether they that would come out of her money and they were arguing and fighting and they were not signing. And I had to go in and talk to them and be like, hey, well, uh, yeah, you're under contract and you really need to sign and get this done. You can hold the money in escrow and figure out, but you have buyers that literally have the usual you all running outside. It was crazy. They were arguing, calling names. I was like, man, I wish I had a camera in this. Sometimes they can get very yeah. interesting and, and heated, but for the most part, all of them go relatively smooth. Sure. Because if they were all crazy like that, nobody would want to be in the business. Now, what about like some some heartwarming moments you know like it's not i wouldn't say it's common but it's happened often where someone is overwhelmed that they actually get to buy a house have you been yeah, involved in I've any been moments in those like that too, and sometimes it, it does pull on my heartstrings mm -hmm. and i have to hold the tears back we've had one a few months ago where they didn't think that they would ever be able to yeah. buy a house and get out of the place that they were at. And they were so grateful and so thankful. And they even came back the next day to pick up some paperwork. And they were just like, thank you guys so much again for everything that you've done. We're in such a better spot now. My wife is so happy. And you know, there were tears at the table. And sometimes it it's hard to hold them back. I mean, I kind of have a little bit of a rough exterior, mm. but on the inside, I do have have a lot of salt. compassion and empathy for people and it's it's hard yeah. to keep it back sometimes yeah that's awesome so now we were talking right before you just recently added your real estate license yes. to your personal life mm -hmm. what was behind that decision and how did you go about doing that it was always something that I wanted to do I just didn't really have a whole lot of time uh, during COVID. Obviously, we were super busy. Mm -hmm. Once things settled down a little bit, I said, you know, I always wanted to do this. So let me just go and do it. I have the time. I have the time at night. Let's get it done and see what happens. And so far, so good. It's been very positive experience being able to help people out. Nice. Yeah. And do you think that that will ever be your full time? Is your plan to do that? It's it's hard because mm -hmm. I, I love title. Title yeah. is my first love, but I also really like this as well. So as long as I can keep it going on both ends, that's what I would like to do. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. And what is your what is your favorite part about the real estate side of things that you don't really get from the title side of it? Is it more the, the, the full scale transaction? It's the full scale right. of the transaction. I get to meet people now before right. everything goes on. And with title, I'm meeting them at the very end. Mm -hmm. So everything that they've experienced up until the end, I don't know right. what has actually went on. So now I'm getting it from full swing. Okay. And I really like it. Now, do you have a, a mentor or a person that you have always talked to as far as it goes, or are you just kind of winging it? I'm, on your I'm own winging it. it. Okay. I'm going in and winging it. Nice, <laughs> nice. All right, so now we'll talk. We talked a little bit about the past, we talked about the present. Let's talk a little bit about the future. Let's go to June, July of 2025. Tell me a couple things that you're going to accomplish between now and then, and what are some things that you definitely want to do in the next two years? Definitely, I would like to maybe start my own team in the future. Okay. Um, I just have to figure things out on my own so I don't lead anybody in the wrong direction. Okay. So just get my feet wet, keep on pushing through, and we'll see what happens. All right. Um, I always like to live in the present. So okay. I do try to plan for the future a little bit, but I like to live in the moment. And do you think that will be more listings, more buyers, or just... Whatever kind of comes your way. Whatever comes my way, let's do it. All right. All right. All right. Now we're going to finish up with your okay. personal question. All right. Mm -hmm. We're going to go with, uh, we'll go with the same 30, 30 minute question. You have a 30 minute interview with anybody who's been alive throughout history, past, present, future. Uh, they could be famous. It could be a family member. You can interview one person 
And you can have them for 30 minutes. Give me who the person would be and maybe one or two questions that you would ask. Them. Okay. So this would probably be my grandmother okay. on my father's side. She passed away when I was 19 years old. So I didn't get to have that experience of having a grandparent as an adult. Mm -hmm. There would be so many questions that I would ask her now as an adult than when I was a teenager. Okay. Um, definitely like, how did you do everything that you did? you know, raising children, having a husband, taking care of things. Like, how did you make it all work? Mm. And then my next question would be like, can you write down all of your recipes? <laughs> my mother just can't mimic them the right. way that you made them. <laughs> nice. Right. We've asked that question. It's crazy. We've asked that question for, for two years now. And, and the first probably 18 months of asking, it was always a famous person. Yeah. It was always like John Kennedy or Gandhi or one of the other things. And recently, it's been more personal. It's been more, yeah. you know, my dad passed away or, or grandma. And so it's really good to see the different answers and different things. And awesome. Chelsea, thank you so uh, much for coming welcome. in. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank we'll you be for right having back. me. No problem. We'll be right back with the next guest on Mr. Mortgage's <laughs> Neighborhood.